What is this, Facebook, Instagram, Disney Plus? Windows 11 is a bloated mess. Today, we're gonna take care of that. Stay tuned. Okay, this is just ridiculous. So, a couple weeks ago, I alluded to the fact that we were gonna do a video on debloating Windows 11. And you know, that video is today. I can't put it off any longer because honestly, Windows 11 is kind of bloated. It's no better than Windows 10. And in some respects, it's actually kind of worse. However, the way that we would debloat Windows 10 was through a script called the Windows 10 debloat script. And I've tried it on Windows 11 and it works, but doesn't work very well. So unfortunately, we need to update this procedure to be more relevant with Windows 11. And so today, I'm gonna to show you how to use another program in order to debloat Windows 11. This program is called This Is Windows 11. And it's actually a pretty neat little program. So I'm gonna go through the entire process and show you how to actually completely debloat a copy of Windows 11, which is something that honestly should have been done from the beginning. I'm not sure what Microsoft's obsession is with bloating down their operating system, but at this point, it's starting to seem like the entire operating system is sponsored by Facebook and Instagram and what is ClipChamp? I don't know what it is with modern versions of Windows, but it seems like with every version, it gets worse and the operating system is turning into just some big billboard that manufacturers can sell ad space on. And they're not even trying to hide it anymore. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to clean it up, give yourself a nice slim down light version of Windows 11. So without further ado, let's get on the computer and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so this is a fresh copy of Windows 11 here. As you can see, nothing has been changed at all. It's just been set up and it has all the most recent updates installed. And if you look here, I mean, what is this? We got Facebook, we got Instagram, we got TikTok, we got Prime Video, and then ClipChamp, whatever that is. We got Spotify, Disney Plus, the Xbox. This, this is all just garbage and we don't want it in Windows. Or you know what, maybe you want some of it, but that's okay because the way I'm gonna show you how to do this, you can keep what you want and get rid of what you don't. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we have to download this program called This Is Windows 11. And I already have this downloaded, but I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description so you can download it yourself. But once we fire this program up, as you can see, at the beginning, it just shows a essentially the home screen is nothing more than just a rundown of what Windows 11 is. It allows you to kind of go through and teaches you about Windows 11. So this will show you kind of just an overview of Windows 11. And as you go through, it'll show you all the new features in Windows 11. You know, I'm not even sure why this is even in this program, but I guess it uh, gives a little bit of benefit. If you want to know some of the new features in Windows 11, you can scroll through this and see for yourself, but I'm not going to waste any more time on it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is skip all this stuff. We want to go down into the system tab, which is right here, right here on the left. And once we click on system, you'll see that we have the current build of Windows that we're currently using. So if we hit the little plus right here, it'll break this up into different um, categories of personalization, system gaming. These are just tweaks that we can make to the operating system itself. And some of them are actually pretty beneficial. If you go in here, this will, you know, apply different themes or different operating system tweaks and stuff like that. What we can do is we can actually come down here and hit the check button and it'll go through and it'll check for all the things that have already been set. And as you can see, the ones that have been unchecked here are ones that have already been done to this operating system, which apparently are ones that are done by default because literally the only thing that I've done to this operating system since installing it was change the theme to the dark theme. And you can see here the use Windows dark theme has been unchecked here, but like the fax printer, haven't messed with that at all. The Microsoft Teams on startup, haven't messed with that at all. So apparently some of the defaults in Windows may have changed since this program was made. But if you go through here, you can actually select different things that you want to enable or disable. Like for instance, we can disable the widgets and uninstall widgets. And by doing that, we just essentially check these checkboxes. What I have found that actually helps best in this situation is to come up to the top and uncheck this. It'll uncheck all the boxes and then you can just choose the stuff that you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable widgets. I'm gonna uninstall widgets and we can change the taskbar alignment if we want. I'm not gonna do that in this one. I'm gonna leave the taskbar alignment in the middle because 
I'm starting to get used to it. We can change to small taskbar icons if we want. We can hide the taskbar on multiple monitors. We can hide the search icon on the taskbar if we want. And this is one that I am gonna check. So we can actually go through and we can check some of these like hide teams on the taskbar, hide the view button on the taskbar. And we can also enable the Windows 10 File Explorer if we wanted to. And then we can also come down, we can hide the most used apps and start menu. That's essentially these right here. When it comes into recommended, it'll have some apps in here that are most commonly used. We can hide those as well, but I'm not going to go through and check a lot of these things. You can go through this list and you can kind of see the things that you like and you can disable the things that you want to disable, but it is relatively powerful what you can do in here. You can disable your game DVR feature. I mean, there's a lot of different settings that you can do on here that actually are pretty valuable. And then from privacy, you can actually disable the diagnostic data if you wanted to. You could, the connected user telemetry, you can disable these services. So a lot of the privacy things like we went over in the last video, we can actually do from here as well. We can uncheck compatibility telemetry. So the location tracking. There's a lot of different things that we can uncheck if we wanted to. Feedback notifications, suggested content and settings app. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get rid of that one. The Windows Hello biometrics. So a lot of these are privacy. And, and honestly, when it comes to the privacy stuff, I would recommend checking absolutely all of it. You know, If you haven't followed the video that I did last week, which if you did, most of this stuff is already going to be disabled for you. And then once you select all the different things that you want to do, you can actually come down here, hit the fix issues button, and it'll go through and actually run a script and follow all of the instructions that you just gave it to do. And that's it. That one's done. So now we can go on to the next tab, which is apps. Now in the apps tab, this is where the majority of the de-bloating is actually going to take place. This is where we're going to remove a lot of the bloat apps that Microsoft includes in Windows 11. So let's get to doing it. Okay, so what I have found to be absolutely the best way to do this is to come over to the middle here and put add all. And essentially it'll take everything out. Now what you can do at this point is you can actually go through this list and decide which things you actually want to keep. And there are some things that I do like to keep. Like for instance, I'm going to keep paint. So from paint we're going to go over here and we're going to click on restore selected and it'll take paint out of the list of stuff to remove. And so you can go down through this list and decide which things you want to keep and which things you don't. I like to keep a lot of these video extensions. So we're going to go ahead and restore these things right here. And then I'm going to keep the Windows Photos app. And I'm also going to keep Windows Notepad here. We're going to go ahead and put that back in there. And then kind of go through this list, find out the stuff that you want to keep, and go ahead and put it back into the apps list over here. Once you have the list the way that you want it, you can go to the bottom right here and you can push empty recycle bin. And then you have to also come and hit yes to confirm that that's what you want to do. And at this point, it'll actually go through and remove all the apps that you had put in the recycle bin in the application. It'll take a second to do. If you're removing a lot of these apps, then it's going to take a minute to remove them. Also, once it goes through that entire list, some apps are actually going to be dependencies for ones that you chose to keep. So it's not going to be able to remove all of the apps. And once it gets to the end, it will actually add the apps that it didn't remove back into the install, installed side. So you can at least see which ones it didn't remove. Okay, so just like I said, you can look here and you can see that a lot of these things are actually put back, like Windows Search and the Start Menu Experience Host. You know, apparently those ones were ones that it was unable to uninstall. So once this is done, we can move on to the next setting, which is Packages. In the Packages setting, this really isn't for deep loading Windows. This is more for installing applications that you use most often, like Google Chrome or 7-Zip and things of that nature. So if you want to install these applications, you can use this section to do it. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to get this section to work. I tried over and over again to actually get this section to function, and unfortunately, it just didn't work. So there are other alternatives that you can use to do unintended installs. Like Enite is a really good way to be able to install multiple applications that you use all the time on many systems. I actually have a package that I put together of common applications that I install on new systems for customers. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to Enite in the 
description below and you can use that to put together your own software packages and unfortunately you won't be able to do it from this application unless you can get it to work. If you can get it to work then send me a message and tell me how you did it or leave it down in the comments below because I'd really like to know. Okay, so like I said, I haven't been able to get this section to work, but if it did work, then it would actually be kind of handy, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next setting, and that's the automate setting down here. So once you click here, these are some kind of some automated tasks that you can do kind of at the very end. So you can um, remove default apps, remove default recommended apps. You can remove OneDrive, which we're going to definitely do. We can update some of the store apps that we have installed, or we can also change to ultimate performance mode. These are actually relatively random automated tasks that you could do. We could disable privacy services if we wanted to, and we can remove telemetry from third-party apps. This would be like Google Chrome and Mozilla and things of that nature. We can also clean up windows as well. So once you select the ones that you want from here, you can actually come down here and we can click on apply selected and then go ahead and hit yes. And it's gonna go through and it's gonna run this on, it's gonna go through and run each one of these automated tasks as it goes through this segment. You might get asked some questions here. If you do, just go ahead and answer them respectively. Like, do we want to enable the ultimate performance power plan? Well, we did check it, so yes. And we go ahead and hit okay. Go ahead and okay. And then that should finish off everything that we're gonna run. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this program now. And as we can see, there's a lot less icons down here at the bottom. And then we open this up and there's a lot less in the list right here. In fact, we're not two pages anymore. We're only a single page. But as you can see, there's still a lot of garbage in here. We still have a lot of these more advertising apps like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and Prime Video. And unfortunately, this program doesn't remove those from the list. So what you have to do is you actually have to right click and hit uninstall on each one of these once you get that script finished. And this is a little tedious, but you can actually go through here and uninstall all these at your will whenever you want. And then if you don't want to uninstall them all, then you can keep some of them. But I'm going to get rid of all of them. So we're going to go through this list here and get rid of all those. And as you can see, we took the start menu from Windows 11 and we shrunk it down to just the beginning of the second row. And then we can actually go into all apps right here and we can scroll through this list just to make sure there wasn't anything missed. So kind of scroll through and see if there's anything in here that you want to get rid of as well. And it looks like we don't have anything. It looks like everything is slimmed down pretty good. So debloating Windows 11, honestly is a lot easier than debloating Windows 10. The debloat script that we use for Windows 10 had a little bit of complication to it. This here is pretty streamlined, but I think the most important part of this application is the app section where you can actually disable or uninstall some of the default apps. The other things are kind of nice additions. However, a lot of the stuff that we covered in last week's video of dealing with Windows 11 privacy, you should have actually already gone through a lot of those things. So you probably won't need those sections in this program. But this program works really good at removing some of the built-in apps and stuff like that. So hopefully it was helpful in that regard. But if you followed last week's video and this week's video, then you should have a pretty streamlined copy of Windows 11 going for you. So hopefully it runs well for you for a long time to come. However, you'll probably have to go through a lot of these things again next time Windows 11 updates because it's kind of the way Windows Update works sometimes, unfortunately. But if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Oh, and hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.